There are many options for finishing glasswork once it has come out of the kiln. You can use expensive machines to cut, carve, grind, and polish work. Or you can achieve these results simply, effectively, and inexpensively by cold working with loose grit. Loose grit is composed of particles of abrasive media, in this case silicon carbide, the same material typically found on wet dry sandpaper. These hard abrasive particles, which are graded to different sizes, are particularly effective at grinding and finishing glass and can be used to transform unfinished works into fully resolved and refined pieces. In this lesson, you will learn the advantages of working with loose grit rather than working with fixed abrasive machinery. How to set up a grinding station, how to grind glass with loose grit, and different finishes you can achieve. Grinding glass with loose grit has a number of advantages over other cold working methods. The materials and equipment needed are inexpensive, portable, and require little studio space. This method is a particularly efficient and effective way to remove material. As the grit tumbles between surfaces to mechanically abrade the glass, the particles break down to continually expose fresh, sharp cutting surfaces allowing you to remove material at a surprisingly fast pace. Another advantage of grinding with loose grit is the signature quality of the finish. Fixed abrasives, like those found on a lapidary wheel, leave behind directional scratches from the action of the machine. Loose grit, however, tumbles as it grinds and leaves behind a more uniform surface without deep scratches. Surfaces ground with coarser grit will have a distinctive type of pitted, matte surface. As finer grit is used, the surface of the glass will develop an increasingly soft and uniform satin finish. Many artists who use loose grit do so for the unique qualities it imparts to finished glass. To set up a simple station for grinding with loose grit, you will need a sheet of 6 mm thick plate glass. Next, gather an assortment of grit sizes to use on your piece. Loose grit sizes correspond with those assigned to fixed grit on sandpapers. You might start with a coarse 80 grit to remove material quickly, then move through three or four progressively finer grits to achieve your desired finish. We will discuss size selection in more depth in the next chapter. Finally, you will need a small amount of water for mixing your grit into a slurry. In mixing slurry, you want a consistency that promotes a smooth grinding motion without sticking. The correct ratio of water to grit will yield a slurry that is loose, but that will hold its edges when left to sit. Once the slurry is mixed, you are ready to start grinding glass. To demonstrate, we'll use this slumped bowl. Let's start by removing the rim left from the slumping mold. After cutting off the edges with a glass cutter, use the 80 grit slurry to grind the rim. This coarse grain size will remove material quickly. Place the lip of the bowl on the grinding station and move the bowl over the plate glass using a figure eight motion. Continue grinding the piece across the plate until you've removed the necessary amount of material. While grinding, check the consistency of the slurry often and add fresh grit or water as needed. You will also need to redistribute the slurry as it gets pushed around the plate. When enough material is removed from the rim, use the same 80 grit slurry to flatten the bottom of the piece. Grind the bottom of the piece against the plate glass using the same figure eight motion. Hold the piece low for better stability, occasionally checking to make sure the piece is level. Now that the rim and the bottom of the bowl have been ground with coarse grit, it's time to move to a finer grit. Slurry that's still cutting well may be collected and stored for later use. Slurry that's been exhausted should be discarded. It's extremely important to remove all traces of previous grits before moving to a finer slurry.
thoroughly rinse not only the piece, but also the workstation, tools, table surface, your hands and apron, and any hoses in the area before proceeding to the next grit size. Having started with a coarse 80 grit, we can now move to a medium 220 grit. Set up the slurry and follow the same procedures as before. The intention when moving up through the increasingly finer grit sizes is to remove all traces of the scratches made by the previous grit. Grind the piece using the same figure eight pattern as before. Loose grit works relatively quickly. Check the progress of the piece frequently by rinsing and drying the area you have ground. We use compressed air to dry the surface for inspection. White pits that stand out against the surrounding area are evidence of the previous grit and indicate that you need to continue grinding with the current grit before moving on. Now that the 220 slurry has removed all traces of the first grit, let's move to a 400 grit slurry and continue the procedure. As the grit size gets finer, there will be less space between the plate glass and the piece, and a vacuum can form. Adding a small amount of dish soap to the slurry will keep it lubricated and help to avoid suction of the work to the plate glass. Finishing edges is fast and easy with loose grit. To avoid chipping, start by beveling sharp edges with a wet diamond hand lap. Then move the piece back and forth across the plate glass, working through the sequence of grits as before. An edge finished to 400 grit will fire polish when slumped. To work on the broad surface of a flat tile, you can use a suction cup as a handle to hold it steady. Compare these finishes achieved with 80, 220, and 400 grits. Fire polishing with a slumping schedule to 1180 degrees Fahrenheit will further refine the satin surfaces to varying degrees of semi-gloss. Note the texture in the 80 grit tile, while the 400 grit tile is very glossy. If the piece you want to cold work is too bulky or awkward to move across a plate, you can apply slurry directly to the piece and use a small plate to perform the grinding. To work on a piece that is not flat, use wet dry sandpaper with grit corresponding to the slurry and rub the surface. With this sculpture of 400 grit sandpaper with a 400 grit slurry imparted a nice finish to the surface. Whether you're cold working objects that are flat or curved or fully sculptural, silicon carbide grit offers a variety of affordable and effective options for finishing your kiln glass.